Hello, my name is Amaya, and today I'm going to be talking to you about cattle ranching in the Amazon rainforest and why it either needs to stop or more sustainable practices should be employed by those farming. My ethical reasoning for this is under utilitarianism. This is because long-term extreme deforestation of the Amazon is going to massively impact global warming. Global warming is a condition that will eventually affect the quality of every single person on Earth's life. Therefore, morally, Brazil's inhabitants, government, and private farming sectors who deal with cattle ranching have an obligation to stop their current ranching practices and find a more sustainable solution. First, I'll go over why deforestation of the Amazon needs to stop. Deforestation contributes to global warming on a massive scale and a method employed currently in the farming practices of Brazilian farmers in the Amazon that perform cattle ranching is the slash and burn technique. Uh, burning trees emits carbon into the atmosphere because trees are mostly made of carbon and when carbon is emitted into the atmosphere, it stays, it contributes to the greenhouse gas effect, which causes the sun um, to be trapped inside of our atmosphere and warms the earth. Um, another reason is that uh, it destroys, deforestation destroys soil, biodiversity, and natural resources. Um, when you take away natural animals that inhabit the rainforest is their natural habitats um, and make fields for farming uh, or ranching just cattle. It's the sustainability of the, the animals that currently live there. They're no longer to get what they need out of the environment and so they'll either die off or migrate. Um, and the more biodiversity you can have in an area, the better off your environment is. Um, it also destroys the soil because when you remove the trees, the roots hold the soil, the topsoil in place. And so that can cause major soil erosions. In addition, the a lot of farmers are uneducated in what fertilizers and pesticides can do to the soil and the environment of the Amazon. Uh, the Amazon already has really high nitrogen concentrations within the soil and that is nitrogen is it what a lot of fertilizers bring to the soil and when you have too uh, large of a concentration of nitrogen in soil it actually becomes harmful um, to anything that's trying to grow in that area um, pesticides obviously don't stay and fertilizers don't stay just in the area that you put them into and so they'll run off into different areas that are not supposed to be used for cattle ranching um, or into rivers and streams and pollute them um, and then the Amazon is a very, uh, has a lot of natural resources that we can't get anywhere else. And so when you cut down forests for cattle ranching, you are also taking away our, like our limited availability to get to some of these resources, including like different medicines that grow, that um, are made out of plants um, and things that can be found there. And also um, a lot of unique animals um, and plants are found only in the rainforest. Uh, also removing the trees through slash and burn methods can uh, decrease the level of rainfall that's found in the Amazon every year. So um, the, the upper tree level creates its own sort of environment and it um, is what it makes the Amazon have such a large rainfall every year and when you take that away there's less rainfall which can make the soil drier which is again 
very concerning when the topsoil is no longer rooted by those tree roots um, and contributes even more to soil erosion. It also, the trees provide coverage for the, the land below and so it's a lot hotter um, with the direct sunlight hitting down to the floor. So it's changing the temperatures of what is felt on the floor areas, um, what was usually under the trees coverage. And then cattle really compared to other um, farming industries like fruits and vegetables or soy are two really popular ones, don't produce nearly as much in food per hectare acre that is required by cattle. So for a one fourth pound patty of beef, it takes about 55 acres of land, which is a considerable amount compared to um, other produce that could be grown. So it's not a very sustainable food source. Um, and farming has really increased the demand for cattle has really increased as the demand for beef has gone out up throughout the world as people um, availability to have income to purchase beef has increased which that is a good thing that people have more income but as far as our environment that can be very detrimental um but on the flip side of that, this industry of cattle ranching for small farmers in Brazil um, provides them with a more stable uh, market to sell their meat than if they went into like produce or soy. Um, and also the what they don't what a lot of people don't take into account is the startup cost for switching over to a different farming industry is so expensive and cattle ranching has pretty small startup costs um, and so it's really not even if they're making more money through producing different crops than cattle their startup costs are so immense that a lot of them can't even afford to start it so it's not worth it to them um, in addition, it's really hard to switch to a new industry, um, and so a lot of ranchers don't want to switch over to something that they are completely unfamiliar with and would have to, like, learn. They like their quality of life. Um, they're living, like, decently well in comparison to before when cattle ranching hadn't been introduced into the Amazon farming industry, so they feel like this is the best method for them. Luckily, after researching, it seems to be that there could be a middle ground that could both benefit the environment and um, help the farmers within the area. Um, education should be provided to farmers on how their farming methods are hurting them in the long run. So a lot of these farmers in the short term might be making profits and enjoying cattle ranching as a profession, but maybe not fully understanding in the long term how slash and burn techniques and the lack of biodiversity and pollutions of rivers and streams is going to ultimately affect them and the impacts that global warming is going to have on them and future generations. And so if they were educated on that, they might be a little bit more open to the more sustainable practices that are being suggested and researched by scientists. Um, and then the education for how to farm more sustainably should be provided to the farmers through um, government grants, government subsidies could be provided for uh, startup costs to shifting if they so choose to shift to more sustainable industries like produce or soy. Um, other very popular sustainable practices that people are vouching for is intercropping with perennial trees, which would just be putting perennial trees within cattle grazing fields, 
which would add to biodiversity, create shade for cattle, um, help with the soil diversity, um, what's going into the soil, and could be really good for the overall environment. Um, fencing off healthy forest areas and waterways from livestock, curtailing the use of fire and land management, adopting no-till cropping systems, and the use of terracing. In the bottom corner of my slide, I also have a graph that shows the sharp increase in current years for cattle or deforestation caused by cattle ranching in the Amazon rainforest and the reason I selected that is just to show that like in the early 2000s there was a period of time where there was legislation um, and government uh, practices in place in Brazil to try to curb the mass deforestation occurring in the Amazon but there's so much money to be made for Brazil and it's become such a large part of their economy. Um, it's 70% of agriculture is cattle ranching within the Amazon rainforest. And so there's been a sharp increase in like the last current years, especially with um, increase in demand um, for beef products throughout the world. So that's just to demonstrate why this is such a prevalent issue right now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, I was really excited to research this. Um, and I think I've hopefully given you guys some things to think about. And I appreciate you watching my video. Thank you.